At the end of the day, this is an issue about trust. If they put, put a company on the entity list, that means no U.S. company or manufacturer can work with that. Uh, they're banned from working with that company. Pushing Huawei out from using U.S. products and U.S. manufacturers is going to force them to develop something of their own. They are already in the cheap phone market, and so this is going to actually make make it probably better for them that they have something in-house that could work. They could actually make phones even cheaper um, and sell it in other markets. So they've said that they have enough parts and components for about three months. So uh, um, they're going to try to figure out their supply chain in those three months. As I said, there are ancillary products that were being sold to Huawei. And these small manufacturers, small component manufacturers, might actually lose their biggest customer and therefore you know, may not even be able to exist. On the handset side, yeah. this is definitely an opportunity for Samsung. Mm. They're basically the leading Android uh, vendor out there, the biggest one out there, who has the same breadth of product line and channel capability that Huawei does. So they're going to be able to capitalize on this. Now, yes, on the network infrastructure side, everyone from an Ericsson to a yeah. Nokia to, you know, they'll, they'll be able to, there are opportunities here be a free as well. for all. Well, oh. yeah, there are competitive <laughs> advantages and disadvantages, of course, still. But nonetheless, it does open up some opportunities. I think the challenge for Huawei right now is, with all of the headline news focusing on the issues around Huawei, around trust, around whether Google will be able to provide services in the future, it could face a loss of consumer confidence. And that loss of confidence could also extend to the retailers and the operators who are stocking their phones as well. If it does come down to a situation where Huawei is shipping phones without these Google services, the appeal is suddenly gone, right? The appeal of the phone, because you don't have these Google services anymore, from a yeah. consumer perspective, there's no longer really a reason to get, or at least as much of a reason to get those Huawei phones. Are there alternatives for these, say, security updates that Huawei can somehow put into its products that is rolling out? Not really. That's Google controlled. It's coming. I mean, okay, they're. Google actually does open source part of the Android platform, and those eventually will trickle over. Mm -hmm. um, but the concern, I would argue, less about the security updates, even though that is important, but the more important thing is just simply access to the Google applications and services. YouTube, Google Search, yeah. uh, Google Maps, right? Anywhere outside of China, we depend on these services every day crucial, of our life. Apps, Without, yeah. yeah, exactly. Without access to those services, suddenly the value of the phone just evaporates. Mm -hmm. One of the positive things that Huawei will be focusing on is that around half of its volume is in the Chinese market. There, Google services aren't even allowed. So it uses a version of Android, but it has a lot of its own applications and Chinese companies' applications on the phones. The problem is very much for Huawei in markets where it's already strong. Western Europe, where we are here, is a real problem. You know, Google is um, losing a big partner in the global market, um, so I, I don't necessarily see that as a good thing either.